Okay, cool. Katie, your lighting is actually better than mine today. How yeah, awesome. It's, it's all on. It's looking good. Yeah, it makes you that, look, not see, that you look old normally, really it makes you look like 10 years younger though. It's I, like, you know, you like, this, like, like really nice glow. Well, it looks like I have highlight on. <laughs> you right, you, you, you went for the best background though. She oh, I went for the best. Oh, thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I was the show painting. You what was happening. Actually, my husband painted that, which is so crazy. He, I never knew he was an artist. I mean, he's very creative, like in the kitchen and stuff like that. But um, like a year and a half, maybe two years ago, he was like, I'm going to, I'm going to make a painting that looks like this. And I'm like, and, and we're going to hang it in our living room. And I'm like, okay, babe. <laughs> I like it. Go ahead. Um, not thinking it was going to be anywhere near as talented as he is, but he's done like, I don't know, maybe about 10 different paintings at this point. They're all like phenomenal. They're hanging all throughout our house. They're going to be hanging in our new group practice as well. So yeah, cool. shout out to Campbell Creative. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So thanks. That one looks just like the ocean. It really does. Yeah. Another thing I get. That's my vibe. Yep. The Love Florida the ocean thing. and all of those colors. <laughs> yeah. So cool. welcome back from Europe. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Been back I mean, you've been minute. back for a little while now, right? Yes. I sound like I'm stalking you. You're like, hmm, we've never <laughs> met, and she knows I've been in Europe, and she knows I've been back. This is a little weird. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a cool trip. I'm really glad we got to do that. Awesome. Where did you go? So we hit up Sweden, and then England, and France. Mm -hmm. And this was a trip that I've wanted to do for years because uh, my plan was turn 40, take a sort of a mini sabbatical and then take my family to Europe for initially it was six months and then it was three months and then it kind of got whittled down to three weeks. But uh, we'll definitely be doing something like that again. It was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I have lots of questions about your travel, but I want to kind of uh, for the podcast. Travel but hacks and tips. Exactly, because I think it kind of relates. So um, that's great. I love it. I'll I'll refrain because I have lots of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, actually. I, I saw something on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh, look, there's an answer to one of my questions. I don't even have to ask you right." <laughs> that's awesome. I love I love that stuff. I'm, I'm a backpacker as well as now a one bag traveler, and so I think I actually might enjoy the prep more than the actual trip, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> That's so I like relate that to like when people talk about like who are addicts, they talk about like the idea of getting mm. high and preparing it. I don't mean to make it fit like, no, but it's like so exciting. The anticipation of, I used to uh, be excited thanks. more about when there was, um, when we had actual photos, not digital photos, like that anticipation of coming home and dropping uh, right. it off at Walgreens and waiting, waiting, waiting. And then, and then I wouldn't even leave. I'd sit there and go through the pictures, you know, yep. which it's reliving the trip. And then I was like, wait a second, Katie, like, were you living the trip or you were living it through the pictures? Oh, uh, totally. So, totally. But now I make picture books. I make picture books of our, our trips. So that's kind of. That's great. And you two are like amazing travelers, right? I, I travel a lot. Um, yeah. I've been away. She, yeah. She travels a little bit more. I've traveled a lot too, but um, since having our son, we've traveled less, a little mm -hmm. bit less with him just cause I don't know. It changes things. He's three and a half. How old are you? I heard you had, kids that went with you on this trip yeah i do have a couple kids yeah <laughs> how old are they <laughs> they're <laughs> you say that like oh yeah i think so yeah. oh yeah the kids well yeah, I, I have two daughters and they're actually uh, 10 and 12 now okay i yeah. asked because katie and i were joking um we we, were, we went to Asheville a couple weeks ago to hang out with um some friends up there and we had a blast and katie was like oh we got to get everything into one suitcase each one little like carry-on suitcase will be like uriah and i'm like man there's no way like i was so excited to wear all my cold weather clothes and oh yeah and she was like and he also packed in a backpack just and he had kids that traveled with him too and i was like oh that's like on a whole nother level Super impressive. Well, here, here, here was my strategy. Honestly, I thought if I have everything in my backpack, then I have two hands and two arms to carry and drag whatever I need to carry and drag in it. And I did end up doing some of that. So it was yeah. a good, it was a good call for sure. Well, and Kate said, oh yeah, like in a backpack, backpack, I go, no, yeah. like a, a, like a, a book, book bag, bag. Like a well, it's, like, it's, 40, it's 40 liters. So it's a good, it's a good size bag, you know. Oh, yeah. 40 liters. I wonder how big mine is. Um, I, like 70. I have, like, a so yeah, I was going to say 200. <laughs> What's that? 200. Kate brought a big suitcase with us to Ashley. Yeah, yeah. So we don't, we don't count. You, you probably don't count liters. You probably count number of bags, right? <laughs> Yeah, I well, I also have a professional like backpackers backpack because I backpack through Europe. Gosh, how many oh, times nice. am I going to say backpack in a row? <laughs> Did you backpack um, with a backpack? I, I backpacked with a backpack. 
Yep. Okay. And friends who had a backpack. It was like a professional one that like ties, you know, that has like the, the support around the waist and right. like the, the, yeah, it was like a professional one that must have been probably 50 pounds. And I was like this, you know, little skinny girl carrying around this massive backpack all through Europe. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But you were in a like way smaller backpack. That's impressive. Yeah. You win the prize. Yeah. You win the Thank prize. you. So how was Get Seen? It was a blast. I'm sure yeah. it was. I was like having like envious jealousy over here. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. Yeah, we had a, a really good turnout and they were all amazing people. And I think um, the presentations went really well. Everybody said they got a ton out of it. Um, oh. If anything, they wanted it to be longer and mm -hmm. you know, to have more time to dig into those topics because I mean, every single topic was easily a day long or more um, worth, worth of content, but it was fun. It was That's really so cool. awesome. And you got to hang out with such good people. Uh, oh, John yeah. and Katie and yeah. Ernesto. And Philadelphia oh, is a really cool city. I, I definitely want to go back there. I've never been. When I, when I went, went was cool. in my very early 20s, I must have been like just 21 or something like that. We went for a long weekend. This was when I was in Connecticut so I could drive. We went for a long weekend and I think I ate like three massive Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. The food so there good. is incredible, but it's definitely all, ca all calories. And totally. <laughs> yeah, chick I was eating chicken wings with Ernesto and Philly cheesesteaks and donuts. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> and did you have tacos? Because I know Katie loves tacos. We did not get tacos. No tacos? Goes. Okay. Maybe because it was Next a Tuesday. Time. I don't know. <laughs> it was not a Tuesday. That's correct. <laughs> well, why don't we dive in? We can chit chat for so long. It's so fun. I can't wait for this topic. Outsourcing, yeah. <laughs> uh, money, some of my favorite stuff to talk about. So I'm excited. Um, so just to give you a brief structure of our podcast, we'll intro the show, which we all always do pretty casually. We'll intro you. And finally, we'll get to the topic. Um, I'll, I'll say something like, let's dive into your topic. We do our sponsor. Um, we usually go about 25 minutes of recording as we're getting close. Kate will be watching the time and she'll give us the finger or that finger or this the thing. Finger. I'll usually like tap her watch. <laughs> Taps her watch. Yeah, like, I'm not giving you the finger. <laughs> we're almost done. That would be aggressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time to get that off. Oh, that's why, right. guys, we're almost done. Yeah, that, that's that's not going to happen. <laughs> so when Kate does that, I usually do the wrap up question, or she'll do the wrap up question, which is, um, what would you like our, what would you like our audience to know about your talk today or takeaway? Um, and then, take a look at what is the name of your giveaway? I have the link here, but what do you, what is the name of it? The virtual advantage online course oh, with a ridiculously long tagline or its subtitle. Online. It's just about how to create an amazing working relationship with a virtual assistant. Awesome. Virtual advantage. Great name. So I'll, I'll say that I'll say it's on our show notes and then I'll say what's way, um, what's one way, the best way that people can get in touch with you and you can share that. And then that's, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Any questions? No, let's do it. Okay. So since we're rec already recording, <clears throat> I feel like I have to, <clears throat> I had like tzatziki for lunch today and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't, I should not eat dairy, I guess, when we're podcasting. Mm -mm. That's not thing. It's <laughs> no. like instant mucus for me. And I was oh, like, no. well, if you're watching, that was like too much TMI. Uh, but this is, this is the pre this, this, this is, is what happens. This is what happens. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we're going to wait for five seconds um, and then I will go ahead and get started. Hey there, Startup Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. Kate is laughing quietly over there because I said Startup Nation uh, instead of Startup Nation. So we're not going to edit that. That was an interesting was way one. of starting up. <laughs> uh, I am one of your hosts. I feel more energized probably because I just had lunch. So I am one of your hosts, Katie Lemieux, and I am here virtually with uh, my co-host, sidekick, friend, colleague, BP, not to be confused with baby, um, which often <laughs> gets communicated when we speak to text. Yes, yes. Our phones often will say, like, what's up, baby? And we're like, no, what's up, BP? Oops, didn't mean that. But we, we know by now because, yeah, it's <laughs> happened so many times. Hey, Startup Nation. Nice to be here. It's Kate Campbell. So I believe we are at episode one. No, we're... 121 118 i'm not really 120. sure we're, we're at episode 120 
Well, you know, it's interesting. We have some breaks in there. So Wait, I think so. Technically, yep, I guess we are. we're at 118, interestingly enough. But who cares? Who knows? Because we don't usually announce episodes anyways. We just announce our amazing speakers. Um, so we are really excited about this podcast. Actually, every podcast we did today, um, and we time batch our podcast, which is definitely an outsourcing activity. Well, not outsourcing, but productivity activity. Um, we've talked about money, finances, and now one of my other favorite topics, outsourcing. So uh, Uriah Guilford, who is an LMFT um, and owner of the Productive Therapist Company, um, he's going to be talking to us today on how to design your practice to run without you. Does that make you sad, guys? Are you like, Woo-hoo! what? I love that Wait. title. Like, I'm so connected. It's me. I'm the business. Well, you're not that, you're not that important. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But sure. just kidding. Just who you are. Uh, but for those of you who are brand new to us, uh, we hope with this introduction, you're going to be sticking around for a long time, not just for this podcast, but for future podcasts as well. And of course, you can always go back and binge on podcasts. And actually so much that recently we have created a quick quick guide, podcast quick guide reference, something like that, um, where you can actually, if you head over to our website, privatepracticestartup.com and head over to the podcast tab at the bottom, you'll see that the quick reference guide. And what is that? Um, it's an awesome way for you to identify podcasts that you specifically need and want. So what we've done instead of having one podcast on each page, which we still do, um, on one page, we have all of the links to our podcast in alphabetical order. So if you have questions on insurance billing, you can go to the billing category. If you have questions on business plans, you can do that. So there's a wealth of knowledge there for you and helping you get more streamlined and really getting you the information that you guys need. So for those of you who are new, um, we also have a gift for you and that is our attorney approved customizable HIPAA form. So you're a private practice clinician, you gotta have paperwork. Um, so we want to be able to let you test drive our paperwork. So head over to privatepracticestartup.com, the resources tab this time, and look for the HIPAA download. So that will be our gift to you. So, and if you're a loyal listener, thanks for coming back. Um, we hope maybe that we get funnier each time. I'm not really sure. Um, but hopefully you're <laughs> laughing. And I like to crack jokes. That's what I do. So, but before we get started with our podcast, Kate is going to share a quick message from today's sponsor. Yes, the sponsor for today's episode is Therapy Notes, our friends over at Therapy Notes. When it comes to keeping your practice organized, you want to make sure you have software that's not only simple, but the best. Therapy Notes have an amazing platform that lets you manage notes, claims, scheduling, and more. Plus, they're offering amazing unlimited phone and email support, so when you have a question, they're right there to help you out. To get started with their practice management software trusted by over 60,000 professionals, go to therapynotes.com and you can start your free trial today. You want to make sure that you're entering promo code PPS as in private practice startup and you'll be able to get not one but two months for free and you'll be able to try that out. And if you want to know a little bit more like a deep dive, a little bit more about the Um, the whole entire platform, definitely listen to our podcast episode 54, where we had Brad Pliner on the podcast talking all about therapy notes and all the amazing things that they offer. So thank you for being our sponsor today and make sure to check that out. All right. So to give Uriah a little bit more proper introduction, like I said, he is an LMFT. Um, He also runs a group practice and is owner of the group practice, but also owner of the Productive Therapist, which is a virtual assistant company that serves private practice therapists. Um, He is a technology nerd. Thank God for the technology nerds because I am not. (laughs) Um, And a minimalist travel packer, which we're going to be talking about first because I need some info on that. Uh, Rock drummer and business development and Enthusiast. Welcome, Uriah. I like that intro. Did I write that? You <laughs> <laughs> did write that about yourself. Yes, you did. That's fantastic. I love that. That or your you amazing way VA. cooler head. than I am. <laughs> <laughs> or your amazing VA. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. I love it. So happy to be here. We are happy to have you. And you and I talked right before you went to Europe and I went to Peru. And uh, we've been talking about this whole you packing in basically a little backpack for three yes. weeks. Okay. Please share with us your tips. Go. We need the down low. So here's an interesting factoid. So I'm a a backpacker. So like backcountry backpacking. And I got sort of passionate a couple of years ago about ultra light backpacking. So this is kind of like super nerdy, finding ways to find the absolute lightest of every single thing you need from clothing to gear to everything above. So I'm kind of applying that to international travel and it helps a ton. So that that's kind of where I started. So I took a 40 liter backpack for three weeks to Europe and I had absolutely everything that I needed. It was cool. 
So what, what is 40 liter? Like give us a visual. So think about, let's see, if you think about like the classic Jansport backpack, mm -hmm. think about that sort of times two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe like that. Yeah. Okay. So what is on, what is on the list of essentials here that goes in your backpack? I want to know. So I definitely love packing cubes, specifically compression packing cubes, which means you can put, roll up your clothes, put them in there, and then there's an extra zipper that squishes everything. So that's one thing. You need to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> and then merino wool clothing is absolutely amazing. So they make merino wool clothing in just about everything you would need. And it uh, dries fast, it's super lightweight, it's warm. And I know this is kind of gross, but you can wear it for many, many days, up to 21 days without any, any odor at all. So, <laughs> wow. so I, I had to test that. I, I tested it and, I wore, and? This, uh, I wore this one black shirt for six days. I, I was going to ask you about the black shirt. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> it, was, it was comfortable. It was great. It looked good. And honestly, it did not smell after six days. And I could have kept wearing it, but my wife uh, did not want me to. <laughs> <laughs> right, because then those pictures are all have the black shirt. Right, right. right. <laughs> so those are a couple things. We can like cut that out and send it to the company and that's a good promo. Boom. <laughs> were you guys, were you guys staying in hostels or hotels or how did you decide where to stay as you were on this adventure? We were fortunate enough to, to be able to stay with family for almost, almost two weeks of the time, family wow. and friends. And then we stayed uh, pretty much exclusively in Airbnbs. Okay. Um, some of them better than others, but overall great experience. Yeah. So now whose family is there? Your, your side? Your wife? My wife has a lot of uh, family in Sweden on her side, sort of extended family. And they were incredibly hospitable and super, they spoiled us. It was really cool. That's awesome. What was one of your favorite foods while you were there in Sweden? In Sweden? Yeah. So they have a tradition that they call fika. Have you ever heard of this? Doesn't sound good, but okay. <laughs> Fika, fecal, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's the most amazing thing. Swedish fika. Think about like um, English tea time, but maybe even better. They have it frequently, sometimes twice a day. And if you do it right, you have a cup of coffee or tea and then up to seven different desserts to choose from. So they're, they're like passionate about this. It's like they're sort of reset their kind of daily routine. Like, oh, we got to have fika. We got to have fika. So being the sweet tooth people that we are, we were like, oh, yeah, let's do it. All the time. Wow. That sounds delicious. And I think it was fun. at, at the age day. I'm at now, I think that would put me in a super sugar coma. <laughs> yes. Between that and the pastries in Paris, I, I definitely gained five pounds oh, for sure. That's amazing. Well, yeah. That's how you know you had a really good vacation though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so we could totally talk about your travels, um, but we're here to talk about how to get your practice to run without you. So and they go together. Yes, together. this is true. Yeah. Tell us more. Yes. So I, I recently did a presentation uh, to a group of therapists called Building Your Dream Team. And it was all about how to create a team, build systems, and then use delegating to virtual assistants to leave the country for an extended period of time. So that, that was my whole pitch. And honestly, the last, I would say, one and a half years of really working hard to create systems and use um, delegation to the maximum benefit made it possible for me to leave and genuinely not work. Like I actually did not work for three weeks. Didn't take a single business phone call. Didn't answer a single email. I didn't jump in to solve any problems. And I was actually honestly quite surprised at my, <laughs> my success with that because I just love, I love working. I love what I do. Yeah, what was that like to actually step away and not be involved? I mean, I, I get it like about training people to do that for you. But then when you love your work and you, it's so easy to just be like, oh, but I'm just so, so curious on what's going on and just to like jump in and check on things. That would be so hard for me to have that boundary of like complete no engagement whatsoever. So what was it's, that like? It's kind of wild. I think the best thing that I did was give away my SIM card. So I literally, <laughs> <laughs> wow. you know, that, that urge you get and uh, true confessions, I sometimes work whenever I can, wherever I am, you know, just, just grabbing the phone and doing quick things. But I literally could not do that because I didn't have a SIM card and I just was forced to not work. So wow. that, that was, that was helpful. That was the, yep. That was like the, the major boundary, like, okay, SIM card gone. I can't. Yes. 
Yep. Yeah. That's in, on Friday night. We went out for a date night and I actually left my phone at home on purpose. And it was like, so I just actually had my like wallet or whatever. And I was like, wow, this is like really freeing. And like, you know, like habitually we're so addicted to our phones. It's like, Oh, there it is on the, on the table. Let me look at it. Oh, there it is. Let me look at it. Like, so true. Oh my gosh. So I can only imagine like, what that was like. It must have been like growing up in the 80s, like when we didn't have any of that stuff. <laughs> I was like, why do I even have this phone if it has no internet? What is it, what is this thing for? <laughs> exactly. Wow. So was that like, did someone like propose that idea to you or you kind of made yourself accountable that way? No, I wish I had that clever idea. But no, I definitely um, had the SIM card for a while. And then I had to give it to my wife because she's our navigator. And we can't do anything without her navigation abilities. Okay. <laughs> so I, I willingly gave it up and it was, it was a great, great thing that I did. Cool. Yeah. But I, and I also didn't obviously didn't bring a laptop. Um, so I did bring a small iPad with a keyboard so I could check in. The only time I did check in actually was when we had to run <laughs> payroll and just simply to approve it and say, yes, go ahead and do that. So that was the only time I actually worked uh -huh. quote unquote. So yeah. tell us about your journey in really getting to this place. Like, what has it taken? What systems do you have in place? Yeah, so I think I've actually been a fan, a huge fan of virtual assistants for about seven years or so. And I actually had the same virtual assistant for five years, which is, I think, kind of unusual. And it was amazing. And then basically what happened is um, – I had to, I was in a position where my virtual assistant was no longer available and I had to find somebody else after five years, which was kind of scary, you know? Yeah. And what I ended up doing is hiring um, someone here that I knew in my local community as a in-office assistant, basically. And they really wanted to quit their job. And so, but I, I had this sort of conflict where I wanted them full time, but I couldn't afford to pay them full time. So what I did is I started um, contracting out his time to other therapists. And I thought this is a great way to get him um, as a full-time employee. And then I realized that that worked quite well. And I realized that there was a, a pretty big need out there for therapists wanting virtual assistants who are trained for mental health. And so I started, it was a little over a year ago, but I started building a team of virtual assistants. And that is partially what allowed me to create the systems that run so that I could leave so that I have a general virtual assistant who runs my practice and I have somebody who does intakes and I have people covering all the different important aspects of the business. What are some important aspects that you come to realize like need to be covered? <clears throat> you know, I know that every private practice owner has a short list of tasks that they really despise <laughs> and they procrastinate and just don't want, you know, I put that in the category of, you know, things that I hate that I wish somebody else would do for me. <laughs> ASAP. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and totally. there might be, obviously there's business things in that category as well as personal things, right? Um, yes. So the, I don't know if this answers your question, but the four things that I love to delegate and would never want to take back are um, QuickBooks accounting. So bookkeeping. Yes, that's my number one. Right? 100%. Oh my oh. goodness. I don't know why that so hurts my brain. It's, yeah, it definitely does. So QuickBooks, accounting, um, insurance billing, 100% never need to do that again. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, phones. I mean, obviously, we all handle our phones and the intake coordination and all that um, when we start up. Um, but there comes a point, especially if you have a group practice, where it just becomes overwhelming and you can't mm -hmm. get anything done. So I love, love having an intake coordinator handle that. So those I think are the only I've become allergic to answering my phone. Like Is seriously, that right? I, I get yes. like, ah, like I hate when my phone rings now. I answered, I have a group practice and for so many years I would, I would answer it outside of the hours that my assistant would work. And now she just takes care of all the phones. She's been doing that for the past year. I never have to talk to anybody. I never have to answer the phone <laughs> clients. I like don't talk to anybody and it's the most fabulous thing ever. So when it rings, I'm like, why are you ringing? <laughs> I can totally relate. It's yeah. the best thing ever. Yeah. Oh, it's been so freeing. Yeah. Sorry. Just Every once in a while I get a, I get a voicemail on my extension. I'm like, what is this? What? Yes. What is <laughs> happening right now? There is some part of the system that is not working. Oh no, <laughs> this is not good. So that was the only three out of four things I can remember, but those are things that I love delegating. Yeah. I'm with you on all those. Yeah. And obviously each one of those things is a system in, a, in and of itself mm -hmm. with procedures and all those good things. Right. 
What are some like resources you use? Like we talk about <clears throat> people leverage and technology leverage. Like what are oh, some nice. of your favorite technology leverages? Well, as much as I love marketing, I probably love technology and software more. Uh, Honestly, I do. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we, maybe you should come over to the private practice startup. We'll hey. embrace your technology <laughs> stuff. There you go. We don't like that. I, I just like it so much that like even what Google sent out an email and it said important, something about the contacts. And I opened it I up got that like, too. Yeah. It was this long and I was like, <gasps> okay, I'll just... Uh, yeah, unread. Okay. Um, all right, great. I should probably get to that. It's important. So it's going to have a deadline because I'm just like panicked. Like I have to do something that I'm not going to, I'm going to mess it up. Like that's just where I go. And I was like, okay, Kate, you can handle this. Okay. If it makes you feel any better, that particular email caused me some anxiety as well. Really? But it was <laughs> like I, nothing. It was like, no, I actually read it. And I was like, I, so I have to do nothing. Okay. Delete. Great. Uh -huh. I, I even had, I sent it to Kate. I was like, by the way, I took care of this. I think I said, but it is 11 at night or something like that. And I'm tired. So can you just reread it to make sure that <laughs> I wasn't supposed to do anything? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think there's a, a couple technology tools, software specific that I uh, love using. Well, actually there's a couple in my office that I could talk about too, that I like a lot, but um, sort of software tools that I, that I wouldn't want to live without running my business. And, um, Shout out to Therapy Notes. Anybody who doesn't have a good EHR should definitely get one because that is a game changer. Um, however, no disrespect to your sponsor, I am a simple practice um, endorser. And so I've been using that for about four or five years. So that's obviously one piece of software that we live in every day. And it actually has a couple automation features that I really appreciate that makes certain things super easy um, that I think not all practice management softwares have. So I, I love that. What are yes. those features? So the automatic sending out of invoices, whether they're statements or invoices or insurance, um, claim, you know, claims. So that happens automatically without doing anything at the beginning of the month. Uh, of course, all practice management softwares have appointment reminders, which is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And then I think the one that might be unique to simple practice is auto pay where you can have um, your client's uh, credit cards charged automatically overnight as long as everything looks good with the appointment. And so that saves on admin time to go in there and individually charge every session's credit card payment. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah, that is And EHR is obviously a game changer. That, that's yes. a great system that helps a lot. What are some of the other technology um, leveraging platforms that you couldn't live without? So I think, you know, when I think about my practice, and then I also think about <clears throat> our clients, the productive therapist clients, we definitely require everyone to have a virtual phone system. And I think that's come a long way. So, you know, an app based phone system such as phone.com, mm -hmm. that's the one we usually recommend because it's HIPAA compliant, it's pretty affordable, those mm -hmm. kind of things. So that makes having multiple extensions, or even if you're a solo practice, kind of just appearing as if you have an infrastructure <laughs> really nice. And then you can run your business off of your smartphone without having, you know, like people do sometimes having two phones, two lines, et cetera. So a virtual phone system, I think is pretty essential. Yeah. We'll put a link for phone.com in our, in our show notes as well. We, that's what I use at the group practice. Loved yeah. it. Been, yeah. been on that for like eight years. It's been awesome. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. You're right. What would be your advice for someone who's like just having that hard time of letting go? Ah, how, yes. How do, you, how do you coach people? In that the struggle way? is real. So two things, people ask me, when is the, when is the best time to get a virtual assistant? Now. <laughs> and I, yeah, and I think it's the same advice, you know, as, as a couple other things, before you need it, like marriage counseling and earthquake insurance, or tornado <laughs> insurance if you have that, I don't know how that works. <laughs> or hurricanes down here. But it's hurricanes, just there you go, there you go. So yeah, I think um, now's a good time, probably. Definitely before, you know, before you go on maternity leave, before you decide to leave the country and go to Iceland and, and before you're stressed and overwhelmed to the max. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's a good time to get a, get an assistant, but even so, and I've watched this over the last little more than a year, we all struggle, almost all of us with delegating because I think we're human and because <laughs> we are so used to running everything and probably doing it pretty well for the most part, it's just really anxiety provoking to give up tasks, especially I think critical ones like answering the phone, talking to clients for the first time. 
Um, so I think that there's a lot more to it, obviously, but I think that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, Kate, when you, you started delegating the phone, like you did a lot of training and stuff like that with your assistants. And, uh, and one, I remember one of them, you had an assistant for a very short time. She didn't work out very well, mm -hmm. but I, I think you also have to realize like, yeah, there might be a dip in certain things as you're going through the training process. So it's really important to know um, that that's happened. And, and I would also say that it's really important at, as a leader, right? Because that's your position when you're, you're kind of leading people in regards to this is that you have to have your own system set up in regards to how to train them, how to check in. The checks and balances are so important from the beginning. I think a lot of times people are like, okay, well, here's the system I taught you once, go out and get it. It mm -hmm. doesn't work that way. Um, I know I've actually been in management and leadership since 26 years old. So I've, I'm very lucky stepping into business that I have all that experience and know how to do that. But what I realize is there needs to be those constant check-ins until that person is kind of, you know, on, on their own um, and creating systems around that. I know Kate and I have worked really hard this year to create a complete podcast system as well as our webinar system. And those were beasts to create, mm -hmm. oh, sure. but oh my God, the freedom and liberty <laughs> of not having to do all those tasks. Um, even now, like I, I feel like sometimes I get a, like, a little lazy. It's like, like you said, it's like, oh, I don't want to answer this. Someone knows how to do this better than me. Like it's not <laughs> worth my time. And truly that's, you need to be focusing on things that right. you are naturally talented at and really only Definitely. that you can do. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you a question because the biggest time suck for me is email. Like, and we have mm -hmm. that with this with a private practice startup as well as I, I've pretty much handled it with the group practice, but how do you recommend people get VAs or assistants to help outsource their email? Cause it's That's so time consuming. It's, it's, like the, it's like the, you know, never ending hole, the rabbit hole. <laughs> it is, it is. I think Facebook and email are the biggest time sucks for sure for me. So I've actually done some experiments recently with this and I qu haven't quite figured out the best way to do it, to be honest, but for a good two months or so, I had my virtual assistant, one of my virtual assistants who just happens to love to wake up at like five o'clock in the morning. Um, I think she has a toddler, <laughs> so that helps. But um, so I would have her go into my email inbox every morning and sort my email and basically put it in two folders, one for like need to respond and then one for you should read this when you have time. And then I also installed a plugin called um, Inbox When Ready so that it actually is, this is brilliant actually, it hides my inbox. So literally when I log in, I don't see anything. Oh, that's so awesome. Until I click a button, a button that brings it. That. Yeah, <laughs> and that's probably been the biggest game changer. The email sorting, I, I tried that for a little while and I would have her also sometimes respond as me to urgent needs, um, but it didn't really end up saving that much time. So I think for me, the, the hack is more around uh, managing how much I check email. And this, this little plugin is, mm -hmm. it makes you feel a little guilty because it says, it tells you like, hey, you've looked at your inbox this many times and it's been you know, viewable for this many minutes today. Uh, and so there's like this little check and balance kind of thing, but that's been a, a huge, a huge help. That's interesting you say that because this morning and sometimes, not all times, like I actually closed out my email. So if the email's open when I open my computer, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right. It's like, it just draws me to it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's awful. And then, yeah. so here I am answering an email or doing something. And I said, Katie, this is not what you said you're going to do. Okay. Last email, shut it out, go read your book because that's, that's what you need to be doing in the morning is reading and exercising and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I know that we've tried different, well, we have a VA that does check our email. We have like a training script. Um, like this is how you respond to this email, this is how you respond to this mm -hmm. email. And overall it works well, but there are some very specific things that people ask that we only have the answers to. Um, right. So I think we we're doing that a lot. What does work really well is, and you can do this whether you're solo or you're a group, is to have a general email for the practice, right? Whether it's admin at or hello at yourpractice.com and then have the virtual assistant handle that completely. So mm -hmm. I, I like doing that. And then I only get forwarded the emails that are important for me to respond mm -hmm. to. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like somebody that wants to work for the practice or something like that. But I really like having that sort of off my plate. And the main contact email on the website is no, it doesn't go to me, which is nice. Nice. Cool. Well, I know mm -hmm. that we could talk about tips and tools probably uh, yes. for the rest of the day. So, um, many, so many tips. <laughs> yeah. So what do you want to make sure that people take away from your message today, Ryan? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So I think 
I think I would love to encourage people to go down the road of uh, delegating and specifically using um, support people, whether that's virtual or in office, to maximize their time and also create more profit in their business because it really is, it creates leverage so that you can do so many more things. And the whole reason why I was able to start the Productive Therapist is because I dialed in my group practice so much and delegated so much that I had the time and energy to do that. And so I think if, if people are already delegating and using virtual assistants, they, you can always improve that. And then if you haven't gone down that road yet, definitely explore it. I think, I think that's, that's the message. Awesome. And I'm going to actually invite you guys, Startup Nation, not only to think about your professional life, but also your personal life. Um, I know a few years ago, we decided to get house cleaners and that was not in my world. Like I, I thought it was very like bougie to have a house cleaner and like, oh, you can't clean your own house. Um, but no, as you become an entrepreneur and your mindset shifts and change, I mean, our cleaning ladies, they clean our house in less than two hours. It would take me and my spouse two hours just to do a floor. So <laughs> when people can do something better than you, you really should outsource it because, you know, we talk a lot about living your dream life and your dream practice. And so not only think about your professional life and what you can outsource, um, but also looking at your, your personal life. I know I've used my VA in the past and I'm sure Kate has too, to do personal things that I didn't mm -hmm. want to do, like planning mm -hmm. a trip. We just did a Kentucky bourbon tour. Well, my VA actually did all the research for me a long time ago of the different tours. I, I don't want to spend 30 mm -hmm. minutes doing that. I'm excited about it, but I, I could outsource that. So where in your life can you outsource certain things? Or one of my favorite books actually was a Tim Ferriss book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, mm -hmm. It talks about time batching. Um, so I'll actually put the, the book on the show notes page too. So for you guys to check that out, but a lot of good tips there. But um, so Can I throw in something? Can yeah, something? yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, along the lines of book recommendations, yeah. um, anybody who is interested in this topic we're talking about and wants to learn more uh, should definitely check out Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. I, Which I feel like that's the word of the day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were just talking totally. about that with Gordon. I, I'm a fanboy. And it's on my Audible right here. Yeah? Yes. Oh, nice. On, on Audible and listening. So we're having him on the podcast. So oh, that's great. I'm super excited about. He's yes. a fun guy. Fun guy. Yeah. So just had to throw that in there. <laughs> and you're right. You have a giveaway. Share with us what your giveaway is um, and a little bit about it. I do. So um, sort of connected to what we were talking about, I definitely figured out that a lot of us therapists have difficulty delegating. And if you've never worked with a virtual assistant, of course, you don't know how to do that to the best, you know, effectiveness. So I created a course called the virtual advantage from hiring to firing everything you need to know about um, creating an amazing working relationship with your VA. And that is free to anybody who's listening to this and can hear the sound of my voice. And uh, also just to tag on another thing that I created to, as a resource to train my virtual assistants specifically in doing phone support is another course called Callers to Clients. So it trains somebody on how to do mental health specific phone support. Um, that's something I'm pretty excited about. That's awesome. So is that available now or that's going to be available? It is available now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, Productivetherapist.teachable.com. Awesome. Yeah. If you want to send us a link to that too, and we'll add that all to the show notes. Um, you're right. What's the best way for people to get in contact with you if they want to reach out to you? So the website is productivetherapist.com and that has all kinds of info about our services and a blog. And I share tips on my favorite productivity hacks and all those kind of good things. And I do send out an email every other Sunday that I think is full of awesome stuff that you don't do. Or do you uh, do the email? I do. I love doing the email. That's the okay. one thing I don't, I don't outsource because I love writing the, the emails. Yes. Yeah. I, I enjoy the copywriting too and making it yeah. fun. Yeah, it, yeah. it does get time consuming though, but I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It can. Yeah. yeah. So interestingly enough, speaking of clockwork and Michael McCallowitz, actually that will be the podcast that will be after yours of Uriah. So um, we will be interviewing him this coming Monday and we'll be excited to hear all about that. So you definitely want to check out that podcast. If you guys don't know Michael McCallowitz yet, um, then you probably haven't been listening to our show for a long time, but we've been chatting him up for quite a bit. Michael McCallowitz is the author of Profit First, and now the author of Clockwork. Um, Profit First is how we run our business financially, um, as well as many others. Um, we had done a podcast talking about Profit First with Ernesto Segues Mundo and Laura Long um, and how much we love it. So you guys will definitely want to check out that podcast for sure. Um, as always, we hope you have an awesome and inspired day. And we wanted to say thanks for allowing us to inspire you from startup to mastery. See you next time.